Now we have a pretty good idea that stock options are very similar to an insurance policy, but instead of being tied to a tangible asset such as a house or a car, it's going to simply be tied over to an instrument in the world of finance such as a stock. In fact, what you're going to learn about stock options right now applies basically the same to a futures options or a forex option or any other kind of financial option instrument that you might trade in the future. So what I want to do in this section is I want to start explaining the option instrument better so you can kind of have a better idea of what you're going to be trading when we start trading options. To start the discussion, let's look at the definition of a stock option. The buyer of a stock option purchases the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a specific stock at a specific price on or before a specific date. Take a look at this definition. This definition explains everything that you really need to understand. We're going to expand upon it, but this is the basic idea of what a stock option is. The buyer of the option purchases the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a specific stock at a specific price on or before a specific date. Now, there are two types of options that we can trade. We've got the call option. The call option is going to give the buyer the right to buy the stock at a specific price. And then we've also got the put option. The put option is going to give the buyer the right to sell the stock at a specific price. So we've got two types of options, the calls and the puts. And we understand that the basic option definition is the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a specific stock at a specific price on or before a specific date. Now let's go a step further. Not only do we have two types of options, but we've also got two directions or two sides of the trade. We can have the buyer or we can have the seller. If the buyer of the option is going to be involved, they're buying the option, obviously, and then the seller is going to be selling the option. Now think about this. If we combine the two types of options, the calls and the puts, with the two sides of the trade, the buyer and the seller, this gives us a total of four trades. You can buy a call, you can sell a call. We can buy a put, and we can sell a put. Here's what you need to understand. These four trades make up everything in the world of stock options. People like to think that stock options are very complicated and they can become complicated. In fact, I've got books, stacks of books that are over a thousand pages that talk about option strategy. But all those strategies come down to these four simple trades. Buy a call, sell a call, buy a put, sell a put. Whatever strategy you're looking at, all the seemingly infinite option strategies, they're really nothing more than a combination of these four trades, buy a call, sell a call, buy a put, sell a put. If we can understand these four trades, then everything in the world of options starts to open up. So let's expand our definition just a little bit here. Remember, we said that the basic definition is the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a specific stock on or before a specific date. I'm going to underline this in blue. The right but not the obligation to buy, we're going to call that the call option because remember, the call is the right to buy. Or the right but not the obligation to sell, we'll call that the put option because remember, the put is the right to sell a specific stock on or before a specific date. Now, the area that I've just underlined in blue, this is the definition of the option. Let's look at the first half of this, which I'm going to underline in red to distinguish it. The buyer of the option buys. What is the buyer of the option buying? They're buying the option, obviously, and the definition of that option is the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a specific stock on or before a specific date. Well, if the buyer of the option is purchasing the option, what's the seller doing? The seller is obviously selling the option. Now, who's the seller selling the option to? To the buyer. So let's expand this definition and look at the seller side of it. The seller of the option is going to be selling the right but not the obligation. I'm going to underline this here. And in red, notice the buyer of the option and the seller of the option. Now watch this. I'm going to underline in blue. This is the definition of the option. I could just as easily say the buyer of the option buys the option and the seller of the option sells the option, but that's not very descript. What's actually happening is the seller of the option is selling the right but not the obligation to buy a stock or the right but not the obligation to sell a stock if they're selling a put, the specific stock on or before a specific date. Now, who is the seller selling this option to? Obviously, the seller is going to be selling this option to the buyer. 
If the seller is selling the option to the buyer, the buyer gets all the rights. The buyer has purchased the option. They get the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell a specific stock at a specific price on or before a specific date. The seller is selling that option. If the seller has given the buyer the right, what happens to the seller? The consequence for the seller is the seller has become obligated. Who's the seller obligated to? Obviously to the buyer. So the buyer buys the option, the seller sells the option, and in exchange, in that exchange, the buyer gets all the rights, all the option, and the seller takes on all the obligation of that option contract. We're gonna explain this and look at this in more detail as we move forward, but here's your basic definition and understanding two types of options, calls and puts, and two sides, the buyer and the seller. So if we'd like to put this all into kind of one screen, I call this my Rosetta Stone of option trades. This little four-way graph here is gonna explain everything you need if you ever get stuck in a strategy that you don't understand. We can buy a call or we can sell a call. We can buy a put or we can sell a put. And look here, if you buy a call, you receive the right to buy the stock at a specific price. If you buy a put, you receive the right to sell the stock at a certain price. Now remember, the seller is selling that option. Who's the seller selling to? The seller is selling it to the buyer. So if the buyer receives the right and the seller sells the right, the seller becomes what? Obligated. If the buyer of a call purchases the right to buy the stock, then the seller of the call becomes obligated to sell the stock to the buyer. This is just the opposite side of the option. Remember, the buyer of the option buys the right, the seller sells the right, the result is the seller becomes obligated to that action. So the seller of the call is obligated to sell the stock. Now the opposite happens with the put. When we buy a put option, remember, we receive the right to sell the stock at a certain price. If we have sold that put option, if you're the seller of the put, you become obligated to the buyer. The buyer bought the right to sell the stock. You have become obligated to buy the stock if in fact the buyer of the option needs for you to do so. We're gonna expand upon this, but these are your basic definitions. And if you can just get this idea and this little screen in your mind, print it out from your notebook, keep it on your wall, no matter what your complicated option strategy might be that you get into, it all comes down to these four trades. Buy a call, sell a call, buy a put, sell a put. Buyer of the option has the right to buy. Seller of the option is obligated to sell. Buyer of the put has the right to sell. Seller of the put is obligated to buy. If you can understand that, you can unpack any of those complicated option strategies and it does not have to be that complicated.